Hello everybody, uh, it's a hello and good morning, good evening, wherever you are after a very long time. Uh, I have been busy uh, with multiple things uh, but now finally uh, we are back and this time what I'm trying to do is that let's make this a bit of fun. Why not the telco guys should have uh, guys and girls should have some fun and learn with fun. So today I'm going to introduce you with 6G. 6G is the new uh, hype word. You all know that we are in 5G uh, phase right now, but the research on 6G is already started. And as you saw just now, I usually play alone. So how would it be that if I can bowl to Virat Kohli, if Pat Cummins can bowl to me, or I can bowl to Babar Azam and maybe I got get hit by a cover drive. All of that is possible with 6G. You might have heard something called extended reality and stuff like that. So we will get deep into that stuff in this video. And I hope you have some fun and you do some learning as well. So let's get it running. So where do we start from our 6G journey? 6G is the first step for humanity where the digital world and the physical world will merge together. In 5G, we saw augmented reality, virtual reality coming into place where you can actually see some part of a digital world being superimposed onto the physical world. But 6G will take it to a very next level. So what we are talking about. So for example, here we are in University of Sydney. Right now, what uh, online education means is that you go onto a Teams call or a Zoom call and attend your lecture. But with 6G, what would happen? 6G will take your physical presence in your home onto a holographic image in your classroom. So your all the senses, for example, your movement, your temperature, your feelings, your body movements, all of them can be just transformed into your digital twin and superimposed into the classroom. Of course, this will require lots of data, lots of image processing and lots of artificial intelligence, all of which are complementary technologies feeding into 6G. The radio access of 6G will provide you with that bandwidth, with that capacity and with that latency that can uh, put these kind of things into reality. Another example that you can think of is uh, virtually attending your office. Right now, virtually attending your office is just attending Teams call or just uh, giving some uh, knowledge sharing sessions and etc. But with 6G, you can actually have a digital twin in your office. But if you're talking about thousands and millions of office workers having their digital twins in the office, again, we will have required massive capacity and massive uh, low latency requirements, all of which are going to feed into the 6G design. Another thing that uh, will be of uh, a lot of focus with these kind of technologies will be the energy efficiency. Let's look into that one. With 6G, we will have ubiquitous networks which are almost everywhere. As you can see uh, in my background, you can see a macro antenna. But with 6G, your density of your network will be very dense. And of course, you will have a lot of energy being consumed. So these networks will have to be highly energy efficient as compared to current 5G networks. As you know, there have been a lot of advancements in 5G in terms of energy consumptions. But when we are talking about 6G, it's all a different ballgame. We are talking about networks which will be launched in the early 2030s. So you can expect a lot of new technologies being developed to make that energy consumption as low as possible. And now let's get to the example that I gave you in the start of the video. So 6G actually can make you uh, play with the best of the athletes in the world. A use case which can be that in this ball, you put the sensors which send all the information back to the edge computing part. And then in real time, you can actually play with the best of the athletes. So when I bowl a ball in the nets, 
the sensors in this ball will get all the movements all the shape on the ball send it back to the processing unit and then based on machine learning i can create a digital twin of one of the best athletes in the world and based on 6g that athlete can actually be playing in a real-time environment and your machine learning algorithms can actually fetch information from that real-time environment feed it into the edge computing part of the network that you're c communicating with and then basically instead of playing alone i can play with rath kohli another most exciting feature of 6g is how objects will communicate with each other and how the objects will communicate with humans as you can see in the background there's a lot of traffic public transport uh, is there so in 6g the networks apart from humans communicating with humans or humans communicating with machines there will be a lot of features where machines can communicate with machines we can have virtual reality uh, displays in public transport the public transports can get information about congestion cars can get information about congestion and that congestion information is live being fed by machines being fed by machine learning and being fed by humans as well so in this uh, part of uh, the 6g domain as well there will be a merging together of digital and physical world which will actually enhance our experience so all in all 6g promise promises to be the technology of the future with 6g our experiences in the digital world and the physical world will merge together However, a lot of work in the next seven or nine years will happen in 6G in, in developing the RAN, the core, and the overall system architecture. But if you start this journey today, I hope many of you will play a very important part in building this technology. And together, we can explore this 6G journey as we move towards the first network launch in the early 2030s. So, all the best and for now enjoy very good data speed on your 5G handsets if you have any.